as we talked about with season three, you're finally here. Uh, and so you are our first time guest, which means it's time for our clubhouse, uh, which we do for all of our first timers. What's the password? New England clam chowder. Is that the red or the white? I can never remember that. White? I, I think we all love this. I think this is something yeah. we all really enjoy doing. And it doesn't get, happen so often. We've had so many of our friends come back on. Um, so it's always a pleasure to have a first timer on here. So I'm I'm super excited to hear what your answers are for these questions. We were talking earlier today, but I even said, like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I just like. <laughs> no. I, I, I <laughs> and I would have told you. Save it for the pod. Yeah, then I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I'm excited. So yeah, we're each going to ask you a question just to get to know you a little bit better and your movie taste. We ask these three questions to all of our first timers, uh, and then you will officially be in the club. So I'm going to kick off with my question here, which is the desert island, where if you were stranded on a desert island, you had you know a TV, a Blu-ray player, and all everything else that you needed, and you were able to take the filmography of one actor or director with you onto this island. Very curious who that person would be and why. It's interesting because I was going to say, I was going to switch it up a little and say, I would choose a cinematographer. Okay. I would choose hmm. James Wong Howe, Ooh. who goes uh, all the way back to the early days of Hollywood and all the way up to 75 when he did Funny Lady. Because he had such a varied career and his movies are just sumptuous. Yeah. But, and you know, I like older movies too. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm getting, I'm sort of like taking my cake and I'm eating it too. Cause I got <laughs> sure. James Wong Howe in there. Yeah. But I think I like that. That's the first time we've heard someone go the cinematographer route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People have, like well, tried to do an actor and a director, but maybe I should open it up to cinematographers. I think it's a great choice. I think you should open up to anyone that's part of, uh, as an integral part of making the film because it's fair. you really look at it and the cinematographer creates this vista that you see yeah. uh, or the vision and, and the look of the film that you're going to see that makes a huge difference in how you interpret the movie. I mean, he works with the director, but if a director's not great, your cinematographer can still save the film in many ways. Yeah. And I, I've read certain directors that said by having how, when they were new, they had how, and he sort of guided them. Mm. You know, this man was really awesome. And Streisand even was like brought him out of retirement for funny lady. She didn't want to oh, make wow. the movie, but she was contractually bound to uh, Herbert Ross, oh, who was okay. uh, Fanny Bryce's son-in-law. He was married to Fanny Bryce's daughter. Oh, um, and I mean, he even so was that's what, during the silent era, which is nuts. His, yeah, yes, his, that's his. what I mean. So it's funny. Uh, I can't huh. go into my phone because we had to use my phone to get me on here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I can't go into my phone and say, yeah, he did this and this and this. And I wrote a few notes. He did HUD. He did a lot of great stuff. Exactly. Exactly. There's so many films. But uh, if you look at them, they don't have the same look. I think that's what I like about it. But yet they had his stamp. Yeah. Well, you the know, cool thing uh, is... Uh, and, for for the clubhouse question, he does have eight directors credits. So you're not even necessarily bending the rules, you know, he has 143 well, cinematographer credits, which is crazy. So, wow. Yeah. But, but I'm going, I'm going to bend the credits. A little bit. I love because it. Okay. The more I looked at it, the more I thought, you know, I, I, I liked his cinematography or his body of work. Yeah. But I don't think it's what I would want to be bound to if I was stuck on a, um, and, that would be, I think, who I would pick would be Spielberg mm -hmm. because I like the intelligence in his films. You know, Absolutely. you could be rollicking at fun, and he's not always made great movies. I mean, you can look at 1941 or Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I mean, there were some movies in there that are really okay. What was he Stay thinking? Stay tuned for Kingdom but, of the Crystal Skull. Yeah, coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm getting confused with uh, the, the last one. No, that is you're right. That's the last one we're we're watching that uh, we're talking yeah, about we're, that next month. We're doing Legacy. Oh, you are. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah, I remember all the the building up to that movie. It was like, oh my god, the second coming of uh, you know Indiana Jones, and then this movie came out. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Not but quite anyway. the Spielberg classic like Ready Player One, right? <laughs> <laughs> One he's known that's for. another thing. It's when he made Ready Player One. Here, we, if you read the book, which was brilliant, yeah, it was filled with Spielberg movies. And he refused to put in all his movies. He put in one little reference to one of his films, and yet the book was filled with Spielberg movies. I know, it was such a bummer. And, and I was watching that, and I was somewhat disappointed. I don't think I would have looked at it as hubris on his part if he would have put more Spielberg mm-hmm. films in. Because if you, if you look at the 80s and early 90s, they were Spielberg films. Yeah, Those were he embodied the ones it. that were the benchmarks of the, that time, at least for someone young. Mm-hmm. You know, without a doubt, uh, e- E.T. was I, I remember going to the movies with your mom to see E.T. We didn't really know what we were going to see because it was really early in the run. Yeah. Yeah. We walked out of there just going, oh, my God, this was just, you know, we were touched. We were crying. We had goosebumps. But it's, we knew yeah. we'd seen something incredibly special. Without One thing that's doubt. interesting about Spielberg about Spielberg to me is like. He has such an impressive body of work and everything, you know, despite what you said about like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull or even Ready Player One or, or any of those types of movies, like he's so consistently good that I almost overlook yeah. him. He almost like mm-hmm. becomes an afterthought because it's like he set the bar so high for himself that it it's just sort of when I think of great directors, for whatever reason, I never think of Spielberg. And I don't know why that is. I think it's just because it's such a given that he's so great. If I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. know exactly why I feel that way. But when you think, when I think of good, like all time directors, I, for whatever reason, never think of Spielberg. And I, I don't know what I think it's just because it's like the silent H, you know what I mean? Like it goes without saying almost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, do you overlook him or do you take him for granted that he's always there? Uh, I think maybe I take him for granted. Yeah. I don't mean that in a bad way. No, no, I mean, for it's sure. just that you assume he's always in that, you know, thingy, he's right. in that category. Yeah. Yeah. It was you know, kind of uh, crazy. Like I mean, when he did that West Side Story remake, which also stay tuned. Brilliant. Covering next summer. I still haven't seen it, but I was just like, man, that's a ballsy move to take on such a classic, but also it's like, who better to take it on? You know, right. than Spielberg. You so, haven't seen yeah. it? I have it, and now I'm I'm waiting because you know a sneak peek, you know, down the road. But we might be talking about remakes, so can you uh, guys I think talk might to be... him about that and let him know that he can see a movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, we've been trying I to tell him. I want to truly tried. I mean, you know, <laughs> your father twice. gives you permission. Him, then. Yeah. yeah, I give you permission to see it twice, <laughs> and I think that's a good movie to see twice because I, I don't mean to get off track here, but that was a movie that I went in expecting to see a really good movie and yeah. I saw a movie that was better than the original in many ways that moved me deeper than I f- at all expected. It was. Well, if anyone had any doubts that I was my father's child, uh, Spielberg was also my pick for the desert Island person. So. <laughs> was it really? It really was. I yeah. didn't know that. I <laughs> forgot all about that. I honest to God did forgot all about that. No, I believe you. I <laughs> but I was also yeah, he's the perfect mix of quantity and quality in my eyes, you know. He's got exactly. everything. Yeah. Because he's got, it's it got it Amblin too. If if he's look at his movies he's produced, he's got, oh, got yeah. Amblin to pick from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You so know? It's a great pick. It's a it's a weird comparison to make because I feel like Spielberg is better. Than Starbucks is to coffee. <laughs> like Steel, Spielberg yeah, yeah. two movies is better than Starbucks is to coffee, but you know oh, exactly yeah. what you're gonna get when you walk into a Starbucks, right? And I think there's something to be said for that. And I feel like I feel like um maybe that's why I don't really think about Spielberg that much, just because I don't know. I guess I don't really know how to articulate my thoughts here. You, but I'm, yeah, you want to tiptoe back from that because you don't know what you're gonna get when you go into a Spielberg film. That's one thing about him, is his brilliance from that. I Fuzz, I'm sorry. It's like no, that's okay. I'm, I'm having trouble and I know you so my well together. That I'm well. like, I'm like, <laughs> no, because that's one thing I like about him is he can go from Duel, which was his first TV movie. I remember sitting in the living room with my dad watching that, and my dad just to to his dying day, that was one of his very favorite movies. And my nice. dad, you know, I won't tell you because maybe this is family friendly. I won't tell you what my dad said at the end of that movie, but he <laughs> just turned to me and he said, that is one of the most amazing movies I've ever seen. And it was on TV. He couldn't get over 
that it was on TV because it was so suspenseful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, I of course was like this, but, <laughs> and you know, Dennis Weaver was one of his favorite actors. And I, I thought that man was amazing, but just what he wrote, what he was able to wring out of yeah. the tension in that. It was just, Anyway, I, I I don't mean to admonish you at all, but that's the thing no, I like no, about I mean, Spielberg because totally... he can go from something like that to something like West Side Story to, you know, he he gets to the soul of what the point is of the movie. Mm-hmm. And it could be anywhere from comedy to drama to, you know, and, and I like that about him. Yeah, yeah, I think what you said earlier, I think maybe I do just take it for granted, right? It's like, oh, Spielberg's over here doing incredible stuff. Like, and for me personally, I'm on sort of like, uh, an exploration, right? That's what this whole podcast is about. So I'm mm-hmm. discovering new uh, filmmakers like Akira Kurosawa and, 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 and people oh. like that. So I feel like I'm like, Oh, these are the masters. Meanwhile, Spielberg's over here just cranking out the hits for years and years and years. And it's always so good. And I think that's probably what it is. Um, it's like, I, yeah, I feel like it's almost hard to comprehend that he like created the summer blockbuster, you know, with Jaws. Right. like, it's like a weird thing to even like, Totally. No, we like we've I mean <laughs> three of us have grown up with them you know it's like it's the summer right. blockbuster but it's just like but that wasn't a thing always you know and now right. it's just like right. it's weird to like how do you give someone credit for that it's like well no that's just always been around like it hasn't yeah. but it is now and that's yeah he's responsible for but that but it it's wasn't before Jaws yeah yeah it's amazing uh, well, I remember Jaws, sitting in the movie oh, go ahead yeah, oh. go ahead no I just oh, no, remember I sitting that- in the movie theater watching Jaws and my dad used to tell me a story about going with my uncle to see psycho Mm. and how um and this guy was a big badass guy that nothing got to him he owned a car lot and had you know dover and so watching yard yard at night and nothing got to this guy (laughs) my my uncle mondo and they went to see at the drive-in to see psycho and he <laughs> my dad tells it that when the shower scene came on, Mondo jumped and popcorn went everywhere. The soda <laughs> went all in the dashboard of the car oh, they Mondo. were driving. He said, "But I was sitting next to my dad when we saw when we saw Jaws. The first scene when the Jaws jumps onto the boat. It's the second time you really see the shark, but it's yeah. when he goes to the boat." <laughs> I was wearing the drink. My dad's popcorn was everywhere. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, it was like, I said, okay, Mondo, you done? Yeah. <laughs> <I guess so. laughs> well, that's a, that's a beautiful segue into my question. Um, those, those moments watching movies are, I think it's why we all like to watch movies, right? You know, we're, we're hoping for that next moment that makes you spill your popcorn all over Mondo. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I want to know if you could go back and relive a movie or even just a moment from a movie it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be that specific. Uh, and you could do it again for the very first time. What, what would you do? You know, um, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm being so long winded. I thought, no, about it's this. great. And this was a movie that it's a movie. And it's also a scene in the movie. I'm, I'm a big sap when it comes to film. I love yeah. I, you know, it, it's and the movie is an affair to remember the one oh. with Deborah Carr and Cary Grant. OK, yeah. And it's Ben's mom's favorite movie. I had never seen it. And, you know, when we she and I got together back in the 80s, they didn't have where you could rent movies and all that stuff. But, you know, right. they had VCRs. But I think we rent. I don't know if we could rent the tape. I don't remember, but she said, you got to see this. And it was on TV one night and we were mm. watching it and I'm just sitting there sobbing at the end. She's crying. I'm crying, <laughs> but I'll never forget that. I, I don't know if you've seen the movie. You have to have seen the film. Uh, there was a remake done with Warren Beatty and uh, Annette Benning oh, called okay. Love Story, which was what the original film in the 30s was it was called mm. um, love affair and oh, they okay. remade, remade it as love affair i think it was Catherine hepburn's last movie movie mm. but then this one that was called uh an affair to remember there's just a scene in there when i think he's painted the painting or she's paint no he's painted the painting she's painted the painting but it's in her house Mm-hmm. And he finally sees her and she he he thinks he stood her up all these times when actually she was going to meet him 
I'm giving spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> spoiler alert. I'll forget I'm about big this. Big spoilers. So for the <laughs> fair to member and loves uh, uh yeah. Anyway. So, but she's getting out of the cab and they're they decided they were gonna meet six months later, and she's getting out and she's looking up at the top of the Empire State Building. Boom, she's hit by a car. Mm. So yeah, spoilers. Uh, I'm not wow. gonna tell you anymore. <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it, it is. But, you know, it still doesn't ruin that film for you. Right. Yeah. See the movie. I still want to check it out. That's a, but the, it comes highly recommended. Scene, the last scene with the two of them, the way it's done, when he, the pieces fit together for him, finally. Mm. Nice. It's masterfully done. And that sounds it, beautiful. It, it, it's the soapiest romance crap you could ever want to see, but it's <laughs> done by two masters. Hmm. In a way that is just has you, you're so invested in the story. That's what I love about movies. It right. takes you out of your life and you're right. in the story. I mean, totally. and you're really vested in these people at this time. And I wish I, I, I love, I would love to see that again for the first time because it was a moment hmm. that just, I, I wasn't breathing. I was just so in the moment I'm crying. I'm like ugly cry. And we were all just looking at each other and crying. And she said, you see what I mean? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. brilliant. That so, sounds beautiful. I'll have to check it out. I'll add it to my ever-growing It really list. is. See it with your girlfriend. I will. Yeah, see it with that... your wife. <laughs> see it with your girlfriend. That's but awesome. Definitely rent it and see it. Yeah, that's what I haven't heard of before. Um, yeah. And so, so my question kind of goes along that road of movies that aren't I guess, well seen or well noticed. Every single person has at least one movie that they mm -hmm. personally love and that they would share with the world, but they feel the world sort of underappreciates or just doesn't understand this movie the way that, you know, the way that we do, um, yeah. the way that we want them to see it and enjoy it. And so we've, we've sort of coined the term on the pod, the unsung gem. It's the movie that you love, that you wish everyone else loved as much as you love it. Uh, but right. it just seems that people don't. Uh, what would be your unsung gem? It's probably a movie that none of you have seen. That's what we want. And I love this movie. Um, you know, America Ferreira mm -hmm. um, from Ugly Betty. It was her first film. Oh, OK. And I remember for the longest time, I thought Mike White directed it, but it was another fellow. It was confusing. But it was called Real Women Have Curves. Oh, okay. mm. and it's a small independent film. And Lupe Ontiveros, who was, she was on um, Desperate Housewives for a couple se seasons. Uh, mm -hmm. She played the mother-in-law of one of the housewives. But she's brilliant in this movie. And um, America Ferreira is, it, it takes place in L.A. Okay. And it's just really about this person, this woman coming into her own. And how this older woman is saying, you can't live like that. You can't do that. And then she's trying to help her. And But it's a brilliant film. It really yeah. is. It's a small movie. But it's one of those movies that takes place in its own little world that is fit to where it is. But it has a message that's for the bigger world. That's, so that's cool. awesome. Yeah, I need to look into so, that. Do. It's a great pick. Real women have curves. Yeah. That so sounds... it's Los Angeles. So I... I love movies like that that are smaller and that have <clears throat> I get the sense that it's like you really get to feel the little community she lives in and exactly. you kind of get a sense of just their life and their little neighborhood. And I love movies that are small like that, but that have the impact like you're talking. About. Exactly. Yeah. And, you, you know, I remember seeing this. It was like in a small independent theater in San Francisco. The thing that struck me about that was. This was her first film, and I saw it when it came out. But you knew there was something about this this young actress. There, she had this. I I wanted to see what else she would do. Yeah, and I, I always followed her career after that. I, and it was cool. I, yeah, that I remember cool. that you were big on Ugly Betty and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. You're able to yeah, see that awesome. first movie. It sounds definitely worth checking out. It is it for is. sure. Well, you passed. You did it. <laughs> welcome welcome to the clubhouse. Good. All the I'm right in. answers. In, my friend. You did it. <laughs> uh, um, we'll get that jacket tailored for you real soon. Good. Good. Uh, clubhouse good. jacket. 